like creating your own affiliate program. An affiliate program is basically um, getting salespeople on the web to sell um, your particular product or service. Um, the way this works, there's, there's different models, but something like ClickBank, the way this works is that if you're selling a particular service, um, you can provide some unique code on your web, web pages, which you give to third parties. They in turn publish this on their websites. And the idea is when people click on that particular third party uh, web page, the information is taken from that particular web page back to your web page so that if a sale is made, it's all tracked through. And there's a nice easy way of providing a, a fixed commission to the, um, the website or the website owner that sold your particular product or service. The um, probably the most famous famous of these would be something like ClickBank. So basically, you can look at this from an affiliate's point of view and a vendor's point of view. So if you've got a website and maybe you want to try monetizing it by um, advertising other people's products or services, you click here. If on the other hand you're a vendor and you want to look for affiliates, you'd, you'd click here and learn more. And uh, so basically, you'd sign up for this. And uh, the way it works is that. Um, Every time somebody makes a, a sale on your behalf, um, it's all done totally automatically, but basically it means that they get a commission automatically and uh, the money's all sorted out without anyone having to trust each other because it's all done through a third party, in this case, uh, ClickBank. Using a share this uh, button. There are a number of services that can help you share your brand across the website. Um, two widely used examples of share this and um, add this. If we fire up one of these, Basically what they do is they provide you with a series of buttons that you can uh, put onto your website and basically it just makes the whole process of um, sharing um, your media that much easier. Again, if you want to learn more, just simply click on this uh, button here and uh, off you go. Link check related but non-competitive websites and offer to fix any broken links. Uh, if you make a list of websites that are related to your website but are not directly competing with you, and you can uh, download a free link checking program such as uh, XENU, which you can download for free. Um, basically, you run a check on the um, related websites, and if you find any errors, you can then contact the owner of those websites and basically say, hey, um, in return for a report of uh, any broken uh, links and uh, instructions on how to fix them, um, you'll uh, give, them, give them the uh, details in return for uh, possibly a link back to your website or a click on the uh, Facebook like button or something similar to that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but um, it's something you can try. Um, certainly what you shouldn't do is run um, a link checking program, check broken links on somebody's websites, and then give that to the webmaster, which is quite often a, a third party company employed by the owners of the website to actually look after the website. All that happen then is they'll quietly fix the, uh, the links and uh, you won't hear anything more. So again, it, it's um, just another way possibly of getting some links. Right, another thing you can do is offer your services as a guest speaker to a local college or university and uh, basically in return ask for some links uh, or again maybe a click on Facebook or something like that. Uh, remember that links from uh, EDU um, domains are quite valuable because they're hard to get so Google will pay attention to those. Reciprocal links with companies in other regions or possibly even in other countries. Um, as was mentioned earlier, reciprocal links these days are not nearly as valuable as they used to be, but if you want to collect some reciprocal links, probably the easiest way to do it is to find uh, the owners of um, websites that are similar to yours and um, ideally located in a different part of the country or a totally different country, and basically just suggest you uh, swap links, because if you're both interested in local business, you won't be competing, and uh, it's probably an easy way of doing this. Um, Another idea for getting links is possibly to buy websites. So for instance, if you go to something like flipper.com, which is a website for buying and uh, selling websites, um, sometimes you can buy up uh, websites with quite nice URLs quite cheaply. And um, basically once you've acquired the um, URL of the new website, you can then put some links back to um, your, uh, your main site. If we go and have a look at Flipper, Basically, you can buy or sell websites. So if you click on the Buy Websites button, you've got information about uh, websites that are available. Um, 
You can look at, um, for instance, websites that have just been sold to give you an idea of prices. So as you can see, um, we've got some websites here. These ones don't look particularly interesting. Um, let's have a look down here. Sociable Guru. Um, you could have bought that for um, $2,100. What else have we got down here? You can search by price range. So, for instance, if we look at sort of mid-range prices, again, if we go down here, you might well find something that's um, you know related in some way to your particular um, service or product. In which case, uh, you can always make an offer and uh, buy the website. Translating your website or blog in different languages, this sometimes can pay enormous dividends because there are so many websites out there which are only in English. So um, simply by translating them into different, a host of different languages, you're going to uh, increase the reach of your website. Uh, if you do this, make sure that you don't use some sort of automated translation tools. These tend to give you terrible results. And another trap not to fall into is using um, um, maybe uh, someone from the local college who uh, knows a different language because especially if the website has technical content, quite often you end up with a translation that is not quite what you would have hoped it would have been. Um, but as I say, it's, it's something else to consider. Uh, it can be expensive, and of course, do bear in mind that once you've got a website in a different language, you then have to maintain it, so it's an ongoing cost. Purchasing adverts uh, on websites related with related uh, um, content to your particular website. Um, there are lots of organized schemes for doing this, but probably your best bet is if you've identified a website which is non-competing but in a similar sort of area as to the area you're working in, um, you can just simply contact the owners directly and quite often if they're amenable to the idea you can get um, basically a banner or an advert uh, surprisingly cheaply. Um, but it's always best to do this directly with the website owners rather than going through a service because then you're not paying the commissions on top. Um, ask for mentioning newsletters operated by, again, a similar but non-competing website. Um, quite often people, when they're running um, newsletters, they start off with good intentions, but after a while it's a real chore and they have to try and think of things to fill the newsletter with. So um, if you can offer something of interest to these people um, that is basically similar but non-competing, uh, again, they might well uh, um, include your details free of charge or possibly for a small charge. The, um, the main thing is not to link to bad neighbourhoods. Um, in Google's own words, it says, don't participate in link schemes designed to increase your site's ranking or page rank. In particular, avoid links to web spammers or bad neighbourhoods on the web, as your own ranking may be affected adversely by those links. Those are Google's own words, so it couldn't really be clearer. So the obvious question is, well, how do you identify a bad neighbourhood? Um, Something you can do is use the Who Is um, website to basically look up details about the um, particular domain that um, you're thinking of linking to. So for instance, um, this might vary from country to country, but if we look at the US example here, which is www.whois.com, if I type in a domain such as CCT Global and do a search on this, uh, that'll tell you that's been taken, uh, not surprisingly, because it's ours. And if we go and look at the uh, who is registry for this, you can see that in this particular case, the website was created in um, April 29th, 1996. So as you can see, this website, which as I say is our main courseware website, that has operated continuously since 1996, which basically means it has a, an enormous pedigree in terms of um, quality and reputation with Google. So it's definitely not a bad neighbourhood. Something else you can do is check out backlinks. So for instance, um, if you want to see how many links uh, we're linking to a website called uh, example.com, you'd search Google using this sentence syntax here. Other things you could check out are basically the page rank of a website. So if a website you're thinking of linking to has a very low page rank, then it's not going to be of any advantage to you to link to that particular website uh, or from that particular website. 
because PageRank is uh, not as important as it used to be, but it's certainly an indication of what Google thinks of a particular web page. So if um, a, a particular page has a page rank of zero or one, then there's going to be little or no benefit in having a link from that page to your particular website. Um, quite often a page rank um, of NA might indicate that um, the, the particular page has been banned from the Google index because generally after a couple of months any page on the web should have some sort of page rank, maybe even zero, but to have a page rank that's not ranked, especially after a couple of months, that's that's could well be an indicator that the uh, the page has been banned for being a uh, basically a bad website. Um, you can also see how many pages have been indexed by Google. So, for instance, again, if we take the example of uh, a website called example.com, if you search Google using um, site colon example.com, that will show you how many pages uh, from that website have been indexed uh, by Google. And again, if um, you've got a website that's a couple of months old and Google for some reason hasn't indexed any of its pages, it's not a good sign. Beside those uh, more technical um, investigations, there's the obvious. If you've got a website that's basically littered with um, typing errors and bad grammar, doesn't look good, it's not the sort of thing you want to uh, have links from. If you've got um, websites displaying messages like coming soon or under construction or that sort of thing, then again, not a good sign. Um, if you've got websites that are just packed with adverts and affiliate links all over the place, again, this is the sort of thing Google doesn't like, so you really don't want links from these sort of places. Um, websites whose primary purpose, purpose is to sell various types of link building programs, again, that's the sort of thing you want to, you want to avoid. Uh, if you've got websites with no decent contact details, you know, just simply a, a fill-in email form and that's it, Again, it doesn't really inspire confidence. I mean, you should really have websites with a proper physical address, uh, a phone number, and basically as much details about the company as possible. And uh, if you just simply got websites that are packed with links to other pages, again, it's kind of addictive. It's probably part of some sort of link farm, and it's not the sort of thing you want to have your site um, related to in any way. Right, press releases. If you've got uh, some important news about your product or service, um, think about putting a press release together. And uh, in the press release, always mention the details, you know, besides your email address, also put things like your, your website address on there, your blog on there, your Facebook, uh, Pinterest, uh, anything else that might be relevant. Finally, um, and this is something a lot of people forget, um, they tend to treat marketing with a website in isolation. Basically, if you've got any printed material, always make sure you have your web address on the printed material. So, if you're running a restaurant, for instance, and you have a takeaway menu, always make sure that you have the uh, the web address on the menu. It sounds obvious, but I've seen examples where this just hasn't been done. Um, headed note paper, anything that you produce that's printed, again, always have full details of things like your website, your blog, um, Facebook, uh, anything, anything you've got that you could advertise, basically advertise it in print as well.